This video is about graphical and conceptual calculus problems related to the second derivative. In the first problem, we are given the graph of a function f of x that you see here, and the goal is to sketch the graphs of the first derivative, f prime of x, and the second derivative, f double prime of x. Now, the first thing to know about the second derivative is that it is the derivative of the first derivative. Therefore, if we can graph the first derivative, we can then graph the second derivative. We know the first derivative tells us about slopes of tangent lines to the original function f of x. Let's draw that right now. We won't take the time to draw it super duper carefully. We will try to get it approximately right. f of x does happen to look like a fourth degree polynomial graph, and if you know about derivatives of fourth degrees, you know they will be third de degree polynomials, cubics, but you don't need to know that to get the sketch approximately correct. The first thing to do is identify where it looks like f of x has a slope that is zero, slopes of tangent lines that are zero, like right about there, the slope of the tangent line looks to be zero, and indeed right about here, the slope of the tangent line looks to be zero, in spite of the fact that that point is not a local minimum like this point is, a low point, or a local maximum. The graph goes up on either side of that point, still the derivative is zero there. That is going to be where the first derivative has a value of zero, right about here, and right about here it looks like negative one and plus two. The slope of the tangent lines are negative over here when x is less than negative one, but they do get closer and closer to zero. That means the graph of the first derivative must be increasing through negative values coming up towards zero like that. Could we roughly approximate it? We can do our best. It looks, for example, that you have to be pretty close to negative one before the slope of the tangent line is negative one, maybe right about there. So maybe the first derivative goes through that point right about there when x is approximately negative 1.2 or negative 1.3. The value of the first derivative is about negative one. The slope of the tangent line, perhaps right about here, looks like it's about negative two. We could try to extend, draw the tangent line and extend it and see if rise over run seems to be about negative two. Seems reasonable. Perhaps right about this value of x, negative 1.6 or seven or so, the value of the first derivative is negative two. And we'll just go ahead and draw a smooth curve here connecting these dots. The derivative then becomes positive thereafter, though it does just does touch zero right there when x is two. It looks like it reaches some sort of local maximum where the slope of the tangent line here in this region right here is maximized, perhaps right about there, I would guess. That looks like it is perhaps where the slope is maximized. What is the slope of the tangent line there? We could kind of eyeball it, do a rise over run. Looks like the tangent line goes up by a little bit more than one there as x increases from zero to one. So we would estimate the derivatives value to be slightly higher than one when x is about, looks like 0.2 or so. That might be a local maximum value for the derivative. Then it, it has to come back down towards zero because now the slopes of tangent lines are getting closer to zero and they're equal to zero, it looks like at negative two. And the graph of the derivative has to just touch the axis there because it has to be positive on either side of two before going back up again. Slope of a tangent line is about one right there, say, so the value of the derivative would be one right about there. Slope of the tangent line might be about two, say right here when x is about 3.25 or so, or 3.5, 3.25 I guess. The derivative would be maybe right about there. And it is a cubic, so in the end, well, okay, if this is a fourth degree, this would be a cubic. In the end, it won't grow, grow as fast as the fourth degree, so probably something about like this is a decent graph to the derivative. So this green graph is the derivative. Now let's go ahead and use that graph to sketch the graph of the second derivative by thinking about slopes of tangents to this graph. And we also wanna understand what the second derivative is telling us about the original function. It is telling us something important. But focus on slopes of tangents to the graph of the derivative first. It looks like the slope of the tangent is zero right about there and zero right about there, so the output of the second derivative must be zero here and here. It looks like the first and second derivative share an x-intercept at two where the original function had um, a derivative of zero and also something important related to its second derivative, changing sign is what I'll give you the hint of. 
Focus now on slopes. Where does the green graph have a slope of one? Maybe right about here. It might have a slope of one. So we would estimate the graph of the second derivative of f, which is the first derivative of f prime, to be um, up to a value of one when x is about negative 0.5, like about like this here. And then the slope of the green graph might be about two, say right, right about there perhaps. Somewhere right around there. Just trying to eyeball it approximately. If indeed the green graph were a cubic, its derivative would be a quadratic, whose graph would be a parabola. And go up about like this, say. It would have to be a negative uh, between here and here because the green graph, the graph of f prime of x, has a negative slope. And that negative slope is most negative, perhaps right around there or so. Half, actually, with if this is a quadratic, it's going to be halfway between the roots. And it looks like the slope might be not quite be negative 1, maybe negative 0.7 or something as a guess. So this graph might go down to about negative 0.7 or negative 0.8 or so, somewhere about like that, before coming back up to 0 again at 2, where the green graph has a horizontal tangent. Then the green graph has a positive slope thereafter. We could try to estimate slopes again and get perhaps something about like this. And, you know, probably to get full credit, you don't have to make it cross the green graph here ultimately, but uh, it would if indeed it were a, qu a quadratic here because the cubic would grow faster in the end uh, because it's a higher degree polynomial. And this then is the graph of f double prime of x. What does the graph of f double prime tell us about the graph of f? It tells us about its concavity, whether it's called concave up or concave down. What does that mean? Concave up is like the graph of f over here, where it looks like it could hold water, like a bowl or a smile. The slope of the graph of f is increasing. It's very negative over here, then is getting closer and closer to zero, then it is getting positive here. That's where the graph of f is concave up. It's also concave up over here to the right of this point right there. On the other hand, it's concave down when the slope of f is decreasing. That happens right in here. There, that is not holding water. That looks like part of a frown. f double prime will be positive here and over here where the graph of f is concave up here and over here. That's because that's where the graph of the derivative f prime is increasing. Same values of x here and over here. And f double prime will be negative in here where the graph of f again has a slope that is decreasing, concave down. That's where the graph of the derivative f prime itself is decreasing. So again, f double prime is positive where f is concave up and negative where f is concave down. Number two is a word problem with no graphs, but to solve the problem, it is best to try to draw plausible graphs. Let P of T represent the price, could be dollars, could be thousands of dollars, of a share of stock for a corporation at time T. T could be years, more likely it might be days. Question says, what does each of the following statements, A and B, tell us about the signs, positive or negative, of both the first and second derivatives of the function p of t. Part A says the price of the stock is rising, so the graph is increasing, faster and faster at a bigger and bigger rate. I think you should be able to answer that question pretty quickly. Draw a plausible graph of the price as a function of time. We are not caring about the units. The price is going up, it's rising. It's definitely an increasing function, but is it concave up or concave down? Because it's rising faster and faster, that tells us the slope of the graph is getting larger and larger. It's gotta be concave up. It's gotta look like this. Is it exponential growth? Not necessarily. Could be quadratic growth. Anyway, the fact that the price is rising tells you the first derivative, p prime of t, is positive. The slopes of tangent lines are all positive. It's an increasing function. And the fact that it's rising faster and faster means those slopes themselves are getting bigger. The graph is concave up. The second derivative is also positive. Okay, that's part A. Part B, 
the price of the stock is close to bottoming out. A little bit harder in this one, I think. Again, we'll graph the price versus time. Saying it's bottoming out or close to bottoming me out means it must have been decreasing for a while at least, but it's getting close to being as low as it could be before it's evidently gonna rise again. That's what bottoming out implies. And at least typically, so this is a little less clear, at least typically a price is going to bottom out with a concave up kind of graph like this as it decreases. So it's reaching a low point, but it's about to go back up. Typically, what would happen in that case where it's about to go back up is it would be concave up. Because if it were concave down like this, you'd be saying to yourself, well, shouldn't it keep going down? It couldn't go down if it goes below zero, but this is more typically what happens. So in this case, the slope of the function is negative. The first derivative is negative, but this is the trickiest part. That first derivative, even though it's negative, is getting closer and closer to zero. That actually means it's increasing. The slopes are negative, but they're getting closer to zero. And that actually means the first derivative is an increasing function. It would be negative in value, but going up. And that means the second derivative is positive. The graph is concave up. Number three is a pretty quick graphical problem based on what we've learned. In this graph, we want to identify whether f of x, f prime of x, and f double prime of x are clearly negative, approximately zero, or clearly positive at each of these marked points A, B, C, and D. Okay, start with f of x itself. It is just the function value. That's this graph, f of x. Certainly negative at A and D, positive at B and C. A and B, C and D are all points, but I could also treat them like they are x coordinates just for the sake of time here. F of A is negative. F of B is positive. F of C is positive. And F of D is negative. We are just looking at function outputs. You can answer that question without using calculus. Is the point above or below the horizontal x axis? That's the only issue. With the first derivative, we are focused on the slopes of tangent lines. Looks like the slope of that tangent line is approximately zero. The slope of this tangent line is positive. The slope of this tangent line is negative. The slope of that tangent line is positive. So it looks like f prime of a is approximately zero. I'll go ahead and write equals zero, though you could write approximately zero as well. f prime of b, this tangent line is positive in slope. f prime of c, the tangent line is negative in slope. And f prime of d, the tangent line is positive in slope, okay? Now we think about the second derivative based on what we've learned. We think about the concavity of the graph. Does it look like part of a smile or part of a frown near the given point? Near A, the graph looks like part of a smile. It's concave up, slopes are increasing. F double prime of A is positive. Near B and C, it's a little bit more subtle and maybe even near D. Is it truly like part of a frown there? Yeah, it's a small part of a frown there. The slope is technically speaking decreasing as you pass through B. So F double prime of B is negative. Is it still negative at C? That might be the least clear one. Ever so slightly, the slope is still going down. It keeps going down until you hit a point maybe right around there. Such a point is called an inflection point where the graph changes concavity. There's one right there, one maybe right about there. Here it's concave up. At that point, it changes from a concave up graph to a concave down graph. The second derivative changes sign from positive to negative. And right about there, it changes sign back to positive, maybe a little further down. It's kind of subtle, okay? Looking like part of a frown there, but then changes to part of a smile right around there somewhere. Hard to say exactly where it occurs, but it's pretty clear that f double prime of c is negative. And finally, f double prime of d, we're back to the concave up region. That's back to a positive second derivative. Number four is a graphical problem about the physics of motion. This graph gives the position f of t of a particle at time t. It's useful to imagine this particle traveling along the vertical axis up and down. 
At time zero, it's right there where that's the output of the function f of t being the position. That's a negative position. Position zero is right there. f of t decreases at first, so that means the object moves down the axis at first as time goes by, reaches a low point at this value of t before going back up again, goes into a positive region where f of t is positive, so it's above the horizontal t axis at that point, reaches a maximum at this moment in time before coming back down again and approaching zero as t approaches this value right there. So the motion is like this. Down, turn around, go back up, speed up a bit before slowing down, then turn around, come back down again towards zero. That is the motion we can imagine for this graph. At which of the marked values of t, t1, t2, t3, t4, t5, are the following statements true? Part A, the position is negative. At what of those marked values of t is the position negative? Position is f of t itself, the outputs. When the graph is below the, x -ax the t axis, that's when the position is negative. So that's t1 and t2. That's where the position f of t is negative. I'll just put a f of t is negative for those values of t. Part b, the velocity is negative. Velocity is the rate of change of position. It can be negative. When we're saying the upward direction here is the positive direction, downward is negative. When the object is moving in the negative direction, that's when the velocity is negative. That's when the slope of this graph is negative. That happens over here. It also happens over here. The object moves down at first. It also, near the end, moved down like that. That's a negative velocity. So it's going to occur where the slope of this graph is negative. At t1, it's negative. Not at t2, not at t3. It is slightly negative at t4 and definitely negative at t5. So the answers are t1, t4, and t5. Those are the values of t where the derivative is negative. OK, let's part c next. The acceleration is positive. The derivative of position is velocity. The second derivative of position is the acceleration. So the acceleration is going to be positive, therefore, based on what we've talked about already, when this graph, this position graph, is concave up. It's a little tricky to interpret physically, but let's just go ahead and answer where it's concave up. It's concave up, certainly here. A uh, little bit subtle there. Is it still concave up there? I would say yes. The inflection point doesn't look like it occurs until right around there. I would say it's positive there as well. Negative there, definitely negative there. And ever so slightly positive here, the inflection point looks like it's right around there. So the answer for where the acceleration is positive looks to be t1, t2 ever so slightly positive, ever so slightly concave up, and t5. t1, t2, and t5. That's where the second derivative is positive. What does that mean, physically speaking? The acceleration is going to be positive um, most clearly at t2 because you're speeding up as you travel in the positive direction. At this moment in time, the slope of this graph is getting bigger and bigger ever so slightly as, you, as time goes by. As you're moving upwards, you're speeding up. That's positive acceleration. But it's also positive acceleration at t1 and t5 in a less intuitive way. When you're traveling in the negative direction, if at first we're going from here downward, uh, you're actually slowing down traveling in the negative direction. And that actually is a positive acceleration. That's the most confusing thing right there. When you're traveling in the negative direction but slowing down, that's actually a positive acceleration. That happens here. It also happens here. Part D, the position is increasing. F of t is the position. Where is it going up? It's certainly going up at t2. It's going up at t3. And not at t1 or t4 or t5. That corresponds to where the derivative is positive. In part A, or part B, we figured out where the derivative was negative. That was saying where the velocity was negative. In part D, sort of the flip side, but we're also describing it in terms of position instead of velocity. Instead of saying the velocity is positive, we're saying the position is increasing, but they are equivalent here. So the position is going to increase 
at T2 and T3, T2 and T3, which is the opposite answers as part B. Positions increasing, the derivative is positive. And finally, part E, the velocity is decreasing, not the position, the velocity. That would mean the derivative of the velocity is negative. In other words, the second derivative of the position is negative. The acceleration is negative. Where is the acceleration negative? It's the opposite of the answer in part C. It's going to be where the graph is clearly concave down. That occurs at T3 and T4. The answer for E, where the velocity is decreasing, is T3 and T4. The acceleration is negative. F double prime of T is negative at T3 and T4. In our last problem, we're given the graph of a derivative f prime. This is f prime of x, not f of x itself. So it's a little different than the previous problem. At which of the marked values is f of x greatest, f of x least, f prime of x greatest, f prime of x least, f double prime of x greatest, and f double prime of x least. Okay, this is tricky. This is the graph of the derivative. It's especially tricky right away. Parts A and B, you could say, are tricky because they're hinting at integral calculus, actually, instead of differential calculus. This is the graph of f prime, again, not f. But it tells you something about the graph of f. And you could even try to sketch f. I won't. Well, no, or maybe I should ever so slightly here. OK, let's, let's, let's sketch the graph of f. The, the tricky part, though, is there's lots of possibilities for the graph of f. They're all vertical translations of each other, because f prime is telling you slopes of f. It doesn't tell you where f starts. It doesn't tell you if it starts at a negative value, or a 0, or a positive value. Um, let's pretend it starts at a negative value, and I will go ahead and sketch it here. Let's pretend it just starts down here. Okay, But that's arbitrary. I could have started it up here. Its derivative is starts out positive and large. It's got a large slope at first. But then the derivative, well, it's always positive. So the slope of the f will always be positive. It'll always be increasing. But it gets to be a smaller and smaller slope and has a minimum slope at x2, maybe something like this, before the slope gets bigger and bigger, before having a maximum slope at x3, it looks like, before going back down again in slope to having a minimum slope, but still positive slope at x5 here, and then a positive uh, slope that uh, increases again as f prime increases. Something about like that is the graph of f of x. And again, if I vertically translated this up or down, it would still be a valid, plausible graph for f of x. That helps you answer parts a and b. Part A, f of x is greatest at x6. At these six marks values, where is it greatest? It's greatest at x6 because it's an increasing function. Part B, where is it least? It's least at the lowest value of x, x1. OK? So that's the graph of f. You have to think about the fact that we're given the graph of f prime. Therefore, we have to infer what the slopes of f are. Because f prime is always positive, the slopes of f are always positive. So f itself is always increasing. Uh, it's not straight, though. It's, it's wobbly, like you see here. Concave down in over here, where the graph of f prime is decreasing. Concave up in here, where the graph of f prime is increasing. Then concave down again. Then concave up again, OK? Part C and D, C and D, whereas f prime greatest and f prime least. There you just look at the graph of f prime at these six marked values. Where is it largest? It's uh, greatest at x3. That's where the highest value of these six marked values is for the graph of f prime. So that's x3. Where is it lowest? It looks like x2. So there you're just looking at the graph of f prime itself. Finally, parts e and f, where is f double prime greatest and f double prime least? e and f. Uh, f double prime, the second derivative of f, is the first derivative of f prime. So f double prime is telling you about slopes of this graph, not concavity. It's telling you about concavity of the green graph that I drew, not this blue graph that I was given. It's telling you about slopes of the blue graph. Where is that slope greatest of these six marked points? Not there, not there, 
Not there, not there, not there. It looks like right there, x6. In fact, that's, is that the only value of x in these marked points where the slope is even positive? That's where it's um, greatest, and that would be where the green graph is most concave up, you might say, of these marked points. Um, perhaps, you know, well, that's the only one where it's positive even. Some places it's got an inflection point, like right here there's an inflection point. Uh, right here there's an inflection point, and right here there's an inflection point. The second derivative of the green graph would be zero at those points, and it's negative concave down here um, and here. Okay, So that's where it's on, the only place where f double prime of x in those marked points is even positive. Whereas at least um, that will be where the slope of f prime is most negative, uh, the two choices are x1 and x4, and looking at it, it looks like this is one, the one where it's most negative, x1. That's where the slope of f prime is most negative. You could say it's where the green graph is most concave down, based on the blue graph that we are given. Thanks for watching.